Hello! Welcome to Fan Flack. There's two of us again. Um, my brother was at it, Disneyland with his grandkids, and I was here um, <laughs> talking to Carolyn. Anyway, the um, we have a, an excellent guest. He's filmmaker extraordinaire Ansel Farage. And most of my friends in the Dark Shadows community will know of his work in relation to the various Dark Shadows connected actors who worked with him. However, he's a uh, pretty uh, well-respected filmmaker in his own right. So we will uh, bring him in and uh, Ansel, welcome to Fan Flag. Hi, <laughs> thanks you for having me. The um, I was just saying that uh, you're getting a lot of very good reviews for your newest film, or at least the last one we've all seen, Todd Tarantula, and uh, that um, stars, of course, David Selby, who uh, Dark Shadows related people will remember as Quentin Collins on the old show. And uh, so can you take us through the process of working with David in relation to the film and how you approached him? Yeah, uh, we David and I had already done um, Loon Lake a couple years ago right. and uh, Dark Shadows Christmas Carol. And uh, we'd been, we had a couple scripts that we'd been discussing about doing again. Uh, the pandemic happened and various, you know, sitting around waiting. And then after the end of the shutdown, I said, I'm gonna make Todd Tarantula. It's a project that I've been wanting to make for almost 12 years. And uh, I, had an, I had enough money I saved up. I worked at a restaurant and a bar and I managed a kitchen and I bust tables and I did all that. <laughs> To, to make to raise the budget to make this film and um uh i basically called david and i said david we've got the money we're gonna do this project and uh you're gonna be a bad guy and okay said, oh, okay um what is it you are you are frozen right now so we still oh, hear your voice we can still about... hear you but um we'll we'll see what it does and then go from there go ahead i'm sorry Oh, it's okay. Am I, am I good now, or is it... Yeah, I, it's it's still frozen. We can still hear you. But, but we can hear you. It should cycle okay. back eventually. Yeah. There we go. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Oh, uh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay. You're sort of back. <laughs> yeah. You've jumped forward a couple of uh, frames. You still okay. there? That's all good. It's all good. Um, so yeah, so, uh, I called David, I said, we've got the money, we're going to make this movie, and, uh, would you like to be this bad guy? And he said, oh, that sounds fun, and, um, read the script, and then, yeah, we went, you know, we shot it last summer. Yeah, but it's, he's, um, uh, he's a very, as you know, he's a very well-respected actor, um, particularly in, in terms of theater. And uh, his Lincoln is, is legendary. And he's, um, in film, as in On Dark Shadows, he has a very real presence and he knows how to work the camera. So um, I can imagine that was uh, a cool experience. You're frozen again. I think we're need, gonna need to take it out and bring you back in, kiddo. All right, that's, not, that's okay, that's okay. Okay, well, we'll see you in a minute. Okay. Let me bring him back. Yeah. See if, that, see if that fixes it. Yeah. Well, that didn't help. Are well, you- He might come oh. back in. 
Well, we've still got a frozen. Oh, no, wait a second. You're. I don't know we what's have going. an eight ball. <laughs> there he is. Are, oh. are you live? No. Oops. We are having problems. I, I think he took himself out that time. <laughs> okay. Well, let me. Oh, he is not in. Okay. I'll send him another link and uh, try it again. Try it again. There's nothing worse than technical difficulties. Yep. Here, wait a second here. <laughs> but I have that I just throw in there every once in a while. Yeah, that's good. And just to, I watched one of Ansel's movies last night. Right. And it was a, a very interesting uh, relationship movie. It was one of those movies you're sitting there going, it, you know, it was, it was just a story of a, a guy and a girl that meet and start going out. And you see what she's doing and what he's doing. And he's being loyal and faithful and a good guy and she's running around he's with being a slut guys. yeah and and you're and you're sitting there going come on will you gotta realize what she's doing to you here come on <laughs> but uh and then in the end it was kind of i wasn't sure whether it was a happy ending or not because they sort of get back together kind of at the end of the they broke up and he's all upset about it and everything and then uh she comes back but they don't show it long enough for you to know whether it works out or not so you're not really sure if it's a happy ending or not kind of a pain. <laughs> so, but it was good I'm checking in to see if uh, there's an update or anything. Ah, uh, here we go. Here he comes. Ah, excellent. Bring him in. I shall, I shall. There we go. Are those All damn right. Leviathans. Yay. <laughs> it's true. That's okay. The Leviathans will get you if you don't watch out. Yeah, yeah. Chris Panic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, all the good dark shadows related lines come from chris yeah <laughs> um yeah anyway david uh david was happy to do the movie yeah uh, he's he's a good guy and uh do, what what are you developing now what are you working on now uh actually our next saturday is our first day of uh production on a I guess I can talk about it. It's a comedy and uh, some familiar faces are involved and um, it's, it is so far removed from dark shadows or Dr. Mabuse or Todd Tarantula. It's a, it's a, it's called the great Nick D and it's a comedy about a, a washed up porn star in Venice beach who is on the path of redemption to not only restart his mainstream acting career but to regain his lost love who is now basically like Meryl Streep uh -huh. and uh it's a it's a it's a <clears throat> it's a comedy and uh yeah some as I said familiar faces will will be in it well oh, cool. you you had to cast Rod Jeremy in the uh role right <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so <laughs> it would have been perfect <laughs> I think you're really you lose using a lot of uh, English on that ball. <laughs> Rod Jeremy has I don't think has ever been perfect in anything. But he's, um, he's been in a couple of mainstream movies doing bit parts. He's actually a friend of an old friend of mine. So, uh, but you know. Yeah, we'll leave just, it at that. This isn't that kind. Of, I mean, it's it's it's. We go more into the 
the uh, the pitfalls of Hollywood than right. like the this isn't like Boogie Nights or like a a, right. a thing about porn. It's just this guy happened to have been in porn in the '90s, and now he's just this washed up schlub old on the beach. porn star. Yeah. yeah, that's just trying to recapture his lost love and. It's the character, Odyssey. it's not yeah. the content. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so it's now, the Odyssey back to the limelight. So to what is that like shooting in Venice? Now, you live there, right? Yeah, I'm from Venice, yeah. Okay, yeah. and you, um, are you, I don't ask legal questions. Are, are you shooting? With, uh, I mean, yeah, it's on, on past projects, there's been, um, you know, permits or whatnot, you know, stuff, right. uh, case by case, case by case, you know? Yeah. Um, but I yeah. mean, shooting in Venice, there's always activity. There's always, there's always filming going on. So, um, uh, a lot of the time, like when we did my film, Will and Liz, which was shot entirely in right. Venice, like we just blend in with, with the crowd. Nobody's paying attention to us. They're paying attention to some crazy crackhead that's, you know, spinning on the boardwalk. <laughs> they don't care. Yeah, I've been to Venice. <laughs> the, uh, in fact, Matt Hall lived there while he was uh, working on the ninety-one show. Yeah, the ninety-one show, and uh, the um, I've heard some interesting stories, but the I I can imagine shooting these days because of the number of people with YouTube channels, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, every other person has a GoPro hung around yeah. their necks, you know. It and plus the whole, the Venice skate, skateboarding culture. So there's always like skateboarders going around and, and they're friends with like fancy, even red cameras, you know, just filming the, the skateboarding. So it, it's all kind of, it's all happening around you. And uh, yeah. Yeah. It would be impossible to tell a filmmaker from a, a high-end skateboard, yeah. you know, YouTube channel. The, the cops should not be concerned about us. They should be concerned about the rampant homelessness. Oh hell that's yeah! Just everywhere, but we won't go into that. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> well, what is the difference between shooting on location in Venice and L.A., which is? Um, it's an the e same. ticket ride. I, I was a better, I, if you don't mind, a better question to ask is what's the difference between shooting in LA uh, versus shooting on location out of LA? Because when yeah. we did Loon Lake, uh, which was the uh, folk horror ghost story with David Selby and Kathleen That's Scott, right, it was outside. The, we shot yeah. that entirely on location in Minnesota, right. and it was the most amazing experience I've ever had. Um, everybody. Well, everybody, they'd grown up with this legend of this witch and this haunted cemetery. So they they were like all coming to us. I'm like, we've been waiting our whole lives to see this story come to life. So the and it, we were shooting in uh, Nate Wilson's hometown, which is, I want to say, like 800, 900 people total. So it was a very small town. And the movie was supposed to be a secret. So, of course, the entire town knew. <laughs> of course. And they were only too happy to have us and you know people like come to our house come to our yard come to our boats come to you know come to our business you can shoot anywhere you want and so it was like having the entire universal back lot at my disposal and uh it was just so much fun <laughs> we were we were front page news of the in the newspaper in the in the tri-county area and um yeah it was it, it people cared people were only too happy um, and in LA, nobody cares because this is an industry town and it's all about, you know, how much are you willing to give me so you can film on my street corner? Yeah. Um, and, or how much can you give me so I won't be blowing the leaves around? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I, I know, <laughs> but, um, I, in fact, speaking from the other side of that, I, uh, when I was in college, I lived in the apartment building across the street from where they shot Grease 2. And <laughs> the a big old high school. Yeah. And uh, we had, yeah. Because we were all LA people, so 
everybody's used to it. You know, you see it on the freeway, you, you know, yeah. and it's, you know, it can be, you get jaded, you know, it, it, I try to tell people you go down to downtown LA, you go to Pink's, you know, Kiefer Sutherland's going to be there. <laughs> Somebody's going to be there, you know, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. uh, I've seen Tom Cruise driving down uh, Olympic Boulevard one day. He was not I, happy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can imagine. I saw um, many years ago, I don't even know if you'll know who this is. Um, we saw Wilt Chamberlain. I know who Wilt on, Chamberlain is. Okay. On the freeway. He was in okay. his little car. Yeah, yeah. And I swear he looked like he was on the Autopia. <laughs> His knees were above Yeah, because he's so tall. And, and, uh, yeah. Exactly. And, uh, you know, you see stuff like that. We saw Angie Dickinson on the free. You know, we'd see stuff like that all the time. But uh, we, um, <clears throat> we went to Farmer's Market one time. Yeah. And we saw Sam Jaffe. I don't know if you have any oh, idea. Yes. I know who Sam we saw, we saw Sam Jaffe uh, and Margaret. And this guy named Eddie, who had a clothing store called Zachary All, all yeah. sitting there eating eating lunch together. <laughs> you know, like what a what an odd grouping. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's just. I, in fact, we lived near um, the fellow who played uh, on Bewitched for a number George, of years. George Tobias. Yeah, okay. who he was the husband of a nosy woman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he did a he did 150 movies. Yeah, and we we live near the carpenters, and you know it just you get jaded. But getting back on topic, the um, the nice part about shooting out of town, and this is something that I discussed with uh, I did a an interview with Brandon Lee before just slightly before he died and he was talking about you know the doing non-union versus union and it's like i said john eric hexham died on a union set it's not about union versus non-union it's about working with people who know what the hell they're doing yeah and yeah. uh working in a safe environment do you ha have that experience? Now, I know you don't use a lot of weaponry and that sort of thing in your shoots. Yeah, I mean, um, well, we are union sets. So right. That's one thing. Um, well, you're California, so. Yeah, but even when we were, Loon Lake was a union shoot. Um, I mean, uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a gun you know, I don't like this is move. These are the, this isn't real what we're doing. This is play pretend we can have fake what like obviously on Loon Lake it was a fake axe that we used to chop <laughs> the witch's head off. Yeah. Um. You know. So it's uh. That that would yeah. be just above scale to do that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I don't have. I don't have a crew. So it's not like there's you know, 30 teamsters behind us as we're shooting a movie, you know, somebody's in control of props. It's like me and two other people. So there's, you know, the worry of, of something like that is null and void right now. I must ask you what, um, speaking of, of small uh, crews, what you thought of everything, everywhere, all at once? It was good. I admittedly i saw half of it and then the blu-ray got corrupted oh no like midway through it and, the, and i was like oh, come on and i tried it on <laughs> of course and i tried it on like three different uh systems to play it on and it was just was corrupted at that same mark so i was like well all it's right it's one of my favorite movies and the amazing point is that the uh effects team they learned it all on youtube yeah yeah, they learned it all on YouTube. So they still had more money. They still had. I saw a quote where they said, uh, "We had like fourteen point six million dollars in a thirty-two day shoot, and it's just that's impossible to make a movie like this." And I was like, <laughs> "Excuse me, that's that's so budget. much money." Uh oh. 
Let's see. Where are you, Mark? There he is. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, everybody was gone. <laughs> I know. It happened. Did, did you lose it on your end, or did you just lose it? No, me? you disappeared. You vanished. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> It happens. You can, you can blame Spectrum. <laughs> yeah. We blame Spectrum for everything. <laughs> or specul Speculum, as I like to call them. Anyway. All of, a, yeah. all of a sudden, everybody was gone. I'm back, though. Oh, no. So the, um, as we were saying, the, <laughs> what were we talking about? Um, uh, lack of crew, lack of money. Thank you. Yeah, they did have, it was a moderate budget film. It yeah. wasn't, you know, we're not talking Blair Witch Project there. Yeah. yeah. Um, Even Blair it, Witch has had more money than I have. Yeah. So exactly. Exactly. But I mean, this is the new thing, though, especially with the level of technology reaching where it is. You can do so much in yeah. an app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, it's astonishing. So the we're getting to the point where, um, you know, people will be able to do. And, of course, the, the big money guys will still be beyond us. You know, they'll be off and George well, Lucas so, probably has another universe created. <laughs> sometimes these guys, especially these Star Trek fan made films. The reason those are what they are is because the guy who's in charge of making them happens to be a millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, the Star Trek New Voyages, uh, he's a, a gaming entrepreneur and he's a millionaire. So yeah. he can afford to have the sets built and, and so forth. You know, that's why it yeah. looks so good. <laughs> Well, he's it's, not he's not just operating in his garage with cardboard backdrops or anything, you know. Well, talent and intelligence can do a lot. And uh, it's, I mean, in Ansel's case, um, he's done some things which are um, comparative to, I mean, I've, quite frankly, I think your Mabuse movies are better than the old ones. So, yeah, and I don't mean the 1920 one. I mean the 1960, 1970, 1980. Oh, okay. And so, you know, it's if someone looked at your film versus those, they would it would compare very positively. Well, thank so, you. I was very young when I made those. I did not know what. I was getting myself into. I had no. I did not know what I was getting myself into. That's so, how everything yeah. happens, honey. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Naivete or, or ignorance. <laughs> but mean, you're 27. No, let's say really? I'm 27 still, though. Yeah. But I was I was young when I did the first Mabuse. I was oh. I was 20. Okay. I was 20 when I did that, and that was that was a bit nerve wracking. Ah, okay. Yeah. And it's, see, I have t-shirts older than you. So okay. <laughs> that's my perspective. But um, the, the great thing about filmmaking now is that you have, you know, it's, it's, my God, Ed Wood. Uh, it, it, you can look at even his high budget ones yeah. and tell it was basically made in his mom's uh, kitchen, but uh, but then again, we have Pentatonics who went into a kitchen with all the members of the group and won a Grammy with a video they made there. Okay. So you know, it's it's just astonishing stuff you can do. Well, and yeah, well look, at Plan Plan Nine from outer space. Their spaceship was a shower curtain behind them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And people are still watching that movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have it on DVD. <laughs> my my old friend Myla Nermi, um, mm -hmm. Vampira. Yeah, and uh, I I wrote a James Dean biography, so I have contacts in that group. Ed, Myla's gone now, of course. Yeah. But, um. But then again, most of everybody connected to him are is gone now. 
um, but uh, she was she was a great lady, and she said that Ed Wood was one of the best filmmakers she had worked with. He just didn't have the capital. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why they're still watching his stuff, and he's still an icon today. Exactly. He's immortal. Yeah. Well, you know, they, we, you know, going to the conventions like I did back in the seventies and eighties, I got to know Forey Ackerman. I got to know a lot of those people, and I met know, Forrest and, Ackerman when I was a kid. I went to his house. Oh, you got cool. to go to his house. I, I never did that. I got to go to his house. I spent like a couple hours there. He and I were just <clears> talking. <throat> I, I was that weird outsider kid that, you know, was not interested in what all the other kids were into and so yeah you know we talked about lon cheney for hours and metropolis and and um uh bella lugosi and he had the the, the cape and the ring and from dracula and yep. so i was just sat there and just uh, and i was like seven or eight years old and just talked and talked and talked and talked to this guy and he was really cool um, uh, and, uh, i got Meet him. I got to meet Joseph Stefano, who created The Outer Limits. Yep. He let me hold one of the misfit ants. Oh, nice. He had it at the at the convention. He let me hold it. And it I mean, that was cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's neat. Well, the, the wonderful thing about going to those conventions is you do meet a lot of people that uh, you would normally not rub el elbows with. Mark's become friends with a number of people that we Linda know. Blair. Yeah, Linda, Linda Blair. Yeah. Linda Blair is the sweetest lady you'd ever want to meet. And, uh, you know, it's funny. You go to those things, and some of those people were very nice, and some of those people were not so very nice. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> and yeah. some of the ones you would think were real nice, judging from the way they act in the shows were really not very pleasant people. Yeah. Well, they're just, they're just actors. And I mean, I've been to a couple of those shows and I've helped out with some of the dark shadows, uh, cast members on those things. And I personally, I kind of find those shows to be a bit sad because it's just like, everybody's just there trying to get a photograph sold and, you know, wondering oh, I, is it, yeah, it's, I, I don't know. <laughs> I get very depressed when we do those. Well, there was one, I was, I was talking to Don Adams, the oh, yeah. guy who was on Get, uh, Smart. Get Smart. And he, and there was nobody at his table. So I went over, we were chatting. And over on the other side of the room was uh, Tracy Lords. She had just done this sci-fi movie. And there must have been a hundred people at her table. And Don Adams looks over there and he says, All the talent in this room, and they're all lined up for that Bembo's autograph. <laughs> so it was kind of bitter, I think, about that. <laughs> oh, you can kind of understand why. But, uh, they, well, you, you know, know. They, they had him, William Wyndham was sitting there, and I, I didn't see one person ask for his autograph. Who would know who William Wyndham is, sadly? Like, maybe five people. I, I'm the freak that does know who William Wyndham is. So I, you know, well, I go people there. from our generation know who he is because he was on TV all the yeah. time when we were kids. Well, he but, was in the Doomsday Machine on Star Trek, you know, yeah. one of their yeah. most famous episodes. And the... Um, but that's, that's what's... It, I agree with you about those shows. They... They tend to be the specific conventions like the Dark Shadows ones are not as, you know, because everybody there is focused on them as as her hero figures. Yeah. Um, so therefore that they're not, you know, they're not sort of in competition with each other. Yeah. At least it was like that back when I haven't been to one in 15 years. So I don't I even think they do them. It. They don't do them anymore, really, except no. for the like we Creation did. Con and things like yeah. that. There's no little local shows like there used to be. No. Well, it's all big business now. Well, it's we had a guy out here in, in LA named Jim Stenard. And he used to do that one called StarCon. It was in Pasadena, and it was 
three or four years they did it. And then him and his wife got divorced and she ended up taking all the assets. So that was the end of Starcon. <laughs> but that's yeah, where I met that's where I met Stefano and William Wyndham and where I first met Linda Blair. Yeah. Well, I know that uh, we, we used to sit next to the guys who started Sci-Fi Channel. And uh, they used to just sit there huckstering their stuff, you know. And we'd all kind of giggle that, oh, that's the Sci-Fi Boys again. So that shows you sometimes things yeah. can come from those situations. But um, the... Uh, so, and then, you know, look at all of the uh, connections you've made um, that have been beneficial. And well, uh, I, I reached out through, I didn't go through conventions, I just reached out to either through agents or right, you know, the normal, the normal way of getting actors. But I mean, I've been to the, the Dark Shadows conventions and stuff after that, uh, usually behind the table. Ah, so, yeah. I've seen how things yeah, that's are, how things are kind of done but um yeah it's not fun i don't think it's fun i i don't either now but um when at the beginning i must tell you i was there for jonathan frid's first fan appearance the first one he had done in many years and uh, i remember clearly him walking into the room and there was not I, you could hear a pin drop. I mean, you know, yeah. it, everybody stood up and it was a truly magical moment. I don't think youngsters, I hate to sound like this. I'm sounding like my mother. God help me. The moon must be full. Um, <laughs> the, I don't think kids these days understand the degree of fame the Dark Shadows people had at that time. Everybody watched it. Oh. Everybody, except okay. for Mark. It, <laughs> it, that's because he had a little sister who was watching it and he didn't want to deal with it. But, I mean, our teachers would talk to us about it in the morning. Oh, did everybody see that? And they were, Jonathan and Laura and Grayson were on talk shows. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they were on there like George Clooney is now, yeah. you know. And as Matt tells the story about uh, his mom being recognizably famous, she would be stopped on the street all the time. Yeah. And, Shelby has uh, told us about when um, the cops had to airlift him out of uh, uh Mar Baltimore, I think it was. Yeah. They were at a parade and he, they mobbed him and they got a helicopter for him and said, run. <laughs> yeah. So. And Fred had that happen too. I yeah. mean, they used to have to manage his appearances because, you know, here you go in here. It was like if they were Beatles. Yeah. Well, there's a reason and, why MGM bankrolled two feature films. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's. They really were, as I said, they really were extremely famous. And so when we walked in that room and Jonathan walked in, it was really something. It was like, uh, let's say, um, William Shatner had gone away for 20 years and then walked into the room. Yeah. And it was, it was something. Um, however, uh, now I wouldn't watch an episode of Dark Shadows if you paid me. <laughs> That's because I had to watch the whole thing several times when we were doing the book. But um, the uh, and we won't even talk about Depth Shadows. But the I think the essence of any kind of gothic horror is something very deep in the human psyche. And so that's why I, that's the other essence of Dark Shadows that comes through with fans. Now, in your case, if they offered you, say, Dan Curtis's daughters walked in and said, 
we want you to make a Dark Shadows movie. Is that something you would do? Well, I mean, there's a new show coming. Yeah, I know. But I'm saying a movie, a film. I can't answer that. You can't <laughs> I just answer can't that. answer that one. Not that I don't have an answer. I just, I'm, I'm not allowed to. Well, I tried. <laughs> I did try. I'm not allowed to talk about that. I know. I know. But Melody I thought I, I had couched it in a way that I... <laughs> Melody and I were discussing a little while ago that we thought that uh, Guillermo del Toro should do a Dark Shadows movie with stop action like he did for Pinocchio. Oh, that was a marvelous film. What they should do, and I've said this several times, and I know that other people have attempted it uh, and pitched it to the powers that be, was a is a Scooby-Doo style cartoon of the show and just like that kind of animation. Penny Dreadful has posted those beautiful uh, character designs of, of what everybody could look like in that thing. And I've always been like, that's what, that's what we should get. Just like an adult animated dark shadows show. And it'd be a cartoon, but you could get everybody's voices or, you know, even if, even if you have to recast, people can match a voice to be. Well, with AI, I mean, yeah, now with AI, you can do anything now. I mean, yeah, that's 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 some <laughs> scary. I don't like I, I'm very concerned about creativity and where it's going to go from here um, with AI, with the Writers Guild allowing for uh, uh, chat GPT to be used to create scripts. And it's like, what's the point of anything anymore if we're going to just allow the computer to do everything? We no have one's no gonna... point or purpose. I mean, if you had somebody offer you a painting drawn by a computer, I wouldn't want that. But you can't see that. Also, now it's so good you can't tell. Like the quality is, it's so. When, and when is that also going to start bleeding into real life? Yeah. Because we already can't trust what we're being told. We already can't trust things that are being shown to us in the media and on. So now with this just evolving and getting better and better at its uh, output, um, I'm concerned just as well, a human being. <laughs> yeah. I, have either one of you seen the uh, Steve Wozniak hosted yes. uh, AI symposium? Yes. That's, yes. I tell you, unless you want to lose sleep, don't watch it. Yeah, I don't. I don't. <laughs> That's scary. The thing is, and, and I say this, I've said it a million times, we have the best national security state in the world. And they're on it. They have their foot on it. And it's not going to go beyond anywhere where it's going to start hurting people. And if it did, they'd shut it down. Now, you heard what they our tried national... tried Terminator in the Matrix, and it didn't work. Well, you you the heard Matrix. what you heard what the Defense Department named our drone system, right? It was Skynet, yeah. right? Skynet. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that like tempting fate? <laughs> what, what did they, what did they name the uh, the uh, COINTEL apparatus? Chloe. <laughs> so you know, it's it's all based on and you know media metaphor but now, to, to go back into movie making yeah i'm curious how long did it take you to make uh that will and liz movie what time frame um, did you shoot that within we i mean it was uh we shot it june 2017 and then uh came back in uh in august for like two days of just pickups and then it, it came out uh, uh, May of 2018. So a very, very brief, tight schedule, just basically the month of June, really. Um, like, was so much fun, too. Uh, and uh, it was just basically myself and the two actors the whole time. So we were just in it. It was like a month of just, <laughs> a month long of just dating, <laughs> just going on all these dates and filming it. <laughs> um but uh i didn't notice you had a lot i didn't see a lot of background people walking around did was that deliberate did you deliberately not 
film in areas I mean, there's where some people, people when we were in venice you know there's people that are that are there that are you know just there um but, how do you how do you deal with that uh permission wise do you have to track them permit. down and get permission no, you, from them oh you mean with background extra people just get out of your way they just they just stay out of your way but um i mean so a lot of the times we were planning so that we would know whatever location that we were going to be in was going to be empty at a certain time in the morning or in the app, you know, so you just plan accordingly. And, um, like the beach scenes, we knew that you know, early on the lighting would be better. There would be less people on the beach versus at like four o'clock in the afternoon when you cannot get a spot on the beach. Um, so just, just, you know, careful coordination and, and planning. Now, have you had an opportunity to do any filming using the AR wall, the LED walls? Oh, oh, I see what you mean, like Mandalorian. No, um, no. I, I mean, now it's all just been I've been, you know, locations or sets and, and all that. Uh, the closest that like an AR wall would, I mean, this isn't like that, but would been when we did the Maboose films, and it was almost all blue screen, so we were doing digital backlot. But mm -hmm. um, they, the, you know, the the light, the LED light panels and stuff didn't exist back then. Right. But uh, that would be cool. Be, I mean, you know, all, there's all these toys and things that exist now. That why not? There's a lot of place. There's a lot of places that rent their yeah. uh, their uh, they call them AR walls for some reason. Yeah, yeah. But they rent those out. So if you're a filmmaker like you are, you could come in there and do. Yeah. Crazy stuff you could never do, you know, yeah. like filming in Tunisia or something, you know, be right. something that be wouldn't be very cost effective. Yeah. Yeah. Well the um you know, when you think about the stuff they had to do on in early television, I won't say the DS word. Um the um the, the stuff they can do now is insane. And yeah. You know, uh, Jim Pearson in his book was talking about, you know, the early stuff they had to do just to, you know, get things on film. Yeah. And uh, and to say nothing of the um, Lee press on nails used as fangs and things like that. So uh, if uh, Curtis could do what he did, well, the whole team could do what they did and uh god knows sam hall did a lot of live tv where they did even more heroic um stuff the uh nowadays i mean i think you guys can really yeah. bring it home and i mean when we did mabuse one um several years ago more than several years ago uh it Catherine was kind of intrigued by the fact that I could show her instant playback of yeah. a take. I was like, yeah, we can watch it right now. <laughs> and so we did. Um, but yeah, she's like, oh yeah, we yeah, this is this is not what we had. And I'm like, oh. Yep. Well, you know, she's been she's been on everything, as you know. And yeah. uh Lyndon Charles, I, I mean he worked with Hitchcock, he was on Twilight Zone. Oh yeah. But, first episode of the Munsters as Marilyn's boyfriend and yeah so then he would like come in and I'd be shooting with a little camera and he goes we're shooting on that peanut and I'm like yeah that's that's the camera now and he's like I'm used to a camera and I'm like well this is, it's, it's high definition <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh yeah well you know like he was talking about the Komodo you know it's little yeah it's not the, yeah <laughs> It's not as big as I as I expected it to be, but um, with all the but now we got the monitor and the lenses and all that stuff that's on it, it it packs up. So yeah, there like, was a there was a guy on YouTube that did a thing on uh, using a Komodo where you could attach your phone to the Komodo, so you didn't have to you yeah. didn't have to buy the screen. The you could yeah. use your phone. I talked to my DP about that actually because I was thinking I could just walk with uh, my iPhone behind behind him as we're shooting and um but then he's like no oh, i'm gonna get a bigger monitor because and then we can see things better and then i was like yeah okay cool i like that that's fine <laughs> yeah well, they, know, they they've got a company called wooden camera 
and they make all sorts of little handles and yeah. things so you you can turn that little tiny camera into this big big monster yeah thing. i know about 10 years ago um my friends and i were working on on a script and there was some talk about us shooting a film and uh uh, happily, we didn't because I think it would have been fairly silly now. But it was just squatch us now, and it was about you know that sort of thing. But I remember looking into the uh, I wasn't doing the technical stuff; someone else was. But I remember from the technology they had then, we were still talking about a pretty big camera. No. And now it's like everything's this big. Yeah. Well, you can get those black magic cameras and they're like half the size of a Komodo. I don't yeah. think that they're, they're quite the image quality of the Komodo, but they're Which much is why smaller. why we went with the Komodo. Yeah. Because that was a discussion too, the black magics and the Aries. We, we talked about them all, but then we're like, now let's just go with the, let's go for 6K and the Komodo and just why not damn it <laughs> <laughs> and next it'll be hologram theater but the <laughs> did, you, did you watch todd's or angela there's some holograms in that one i know i know yeah. that's my that's my fear yeah well you know we've got some scary times ahead but we've had scary times behind us too so the uh mark and i lived through hiding under our desks and uh that's did my parents yeah yeah so they yeah. actually oh. thought they actually thought that cardboard desk would stop a nuclear explosion <laughs> no they didn't they just thought and, it was kindling that would burn us up <laughs> i don't know if melody will remember this but i remember going to the fair and they had a display of bomb shelters at the at the fair oh yeah <laughs> like, I remember yeah, we were all let's hope, we, ready. let's hope we don't go there again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're I think we're seeing the only World War Three we'll ever see, which is basically just computer war. But uh I, I think they're smart enough now what's the point of barbecuing the planet, you know? Uh, I don't know, there's still some stupid people in control, but Yeah. Again, but, we won't uh, go there. We also have national security behind it. So, yeah. Yeah. Let's but, hope. Yeah. Let's hope. And I have to remain hopeful, you know, at my age. <laughs> but uh, you guys, you, you have. Um, see, what time are we at, Mark? We have about 12 minutes. So, okay. uh, we need to get Ansel telling us all of his yeah. future plans and what's coming up. Yeah, tell us what's coming up that you can tell us. And uh, give us any social media you want to share, anything like that. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, I've got, uh, as I mentioned, this comedy that we're, we're starting production. Uh, it won't be out for probably till next year. Um, but uh, Todd, you have a, Tran Todd Tarantula. Do you have a name? Yeah, you have a great, name for the comedy? The Great Nick D. The Great Nick D. Yeah. Okay. Like the great Gatsby, because he wanted to be like Robert Redford when he was a kid. And it didn't work out. So he's the great Nick D. Um, but uh, uh, Todd Tarantula is currently streaming on uh, 2 TV. And um, I just got this. Uh, the Blu-ray is coming um, June 6th. So I can announce that. And it's got special features and whole bunch of everything you guys literally saw it first excellent and, uh, thank you yeah and um uh what else have i got coming um yeah that's what i've got coming <laughs> i've got a comedy and i got that and do you have any kind of web presence or yeah i have i mean you can check out my website hollandsworth productions H O L L I N S W O R T H productions. And you can get, um, I mean, in addition to Todd Tarantula, which is coming soon, there's uh, Loon Lake, my 
folk horror film with uh, David Selby and Catherine Lee Scott. We shot on location. That's and, my favorite. Well, thank you. I, I, that was, it's my favorite too. Don't tell my other movies I said that. I won't. Um, <laughs> and then uh, there's Mabuse, the, all three Dr. Mabuse movies on uh, two Blu-rays. And there's, oh, there's uh, Lara, Jerry, and Catherine. Yeah. If you can make it out. And uh, Will and Liz, as you brought up on Blu-ray. So I watched that one. <laughs> thank you for watching. And you can get all those on uh, my website, Hollands, or you can find them on my website and order them from Amazon. But Hollandsworth Productions, and um, I've got a YouTube channel, Hollandsworth Productions, as well. Basically, if you go to my website, everything is there. Uh, buy them off his website. I'm sure he does better with that than if you buy them on Amazon. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, and Twitter, Facebook, you do any of that stuff? I, I don't have twitter and i just have the the basic facebook account but i don't add anybody on it because there's strange people on the internet so yes if, if you, yes like the two of uh, her like and me yeah <laughs> and we we are going to put links to all of the things that ansel spoke about on the fan black page so if you want any of that stuff just go to the fan black page and there'll be thank links you. thank you and beware we are out there but uh, <laughs> actually, ninety percent of fans are just normal people, like you know. But then there's that ten percent. There's it, it, trust me, I've met them. <laughs> I actually know. I talked at length with someone who sleeps in a coffin and considers herself a vampire. It takes and all kinds. It takes all she kinds. She had kids. So it takes all kinds. I mean, I'm from LA. I've seen a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the, you know how it is. Just going down to uh, Hollywood Boulevard, or, yeah. or 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 even the end of my own street is. <laughs> yeah. In Venice. I got gotcha. you. Uh, like I said, I've been there. Um. Anyway, the. Uh, so we still have got... eight minutes, so don't wrap it up quite yet. <laughs> okay. No, I'm not. No, okay. I was going to ask, I, I'm trying to think of questions I can uh, ask to elicit some information about the unnamed, unknown project. Um, Dark but Shadows I can't think of anything. Pardon? Dark Shadows Reincarnation? Yeah. yeah. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. And it's still, it's not, you know, don't believe what the fans who seemingly have inside information say that it's over. No, it's not over. It's, it will be awesome. It will happen and it will blow all of your minds. Good. I, I may actually watch it. Yeah. It's, it's going to, it's going to, um, honor what's come before, but build and not, it won't be the same old thing. It's not going to be Barnabas and Victoria and here we are coming out. Uh, it's going to be new and it's going to be, God. it's going and to, it, and it's not going to star. And it's that? not going to star Johnny Depp. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, the, um, now what was yeah. the talk? What was yeah. the talk that Johnny Depp had bought the rights to, dark shadows and that nobody could make anything or... everybody was saying that and it's not true no no he doesn't have the rights it's it's with the family yeah the Curtis's daughters and uh they're pretty savvy people so they um but as for uh depth um and my problem with the film was it didn't uh honor the past it smirked at it and uh well, he, it was like he was making fun of the show yes. because he was during the he whole was. movie yeah i was like why did he even bother doing it no I, this this won't be anything anything like that it's gonna i mean the the i can't talk about it but it's really good yeah. it's we really, don't want to get we don't want to get ansel into things. trouble it's taking we don't want to get ansel in trouble yeah. it's taking what uh the world that's been established by Dan Curtis and everybody and just making it more cinematic. So it's just, it's, it'll just be 
the richer, larger canvas. Richer. Yeah. Now, well, that sounds wonderful. And what uh, was the other? I, I'm sorry, but what was the other series Dad Curtis did? The Winds of War, War and Remembrance. Oh, you I'm mean thinking, Super Train? <laughs> no, there was a TV series. That was a movie. No, those are Super, those are miniseries. Yeah, Super, Super, Super Train was a series. Oh, Super Train. Super <laughs> yeah. Train. Yeah, because yeah, that yeah. what that didn't that have Gene Wilder in it? I think Super I think it was Train. Just basically a pilot. That never went anywhere. Group of poor people. It seemed like it had either Richard Pryor or Gene Wilde or some of those people in it. Uh, but it, it was, was it was terrible. Yeah. Yeah, he, was. he wasn't really involved in that actually. He just kind of got attached to it and then other people took over and his name was just stamped on it. Yeah. But everybody has stuff like that, you know. But uh the um the only other series that he was a part of was the Ben Cross Dark Shadows in 91. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that was a quality. Uh, I wish they hadn't regurgitated the story. I mean, I think that's the problem they keep falling into. Yeah. Is that they, it took a long time to play that out on t television. Yeah. And trying to compact that down into, yeah, you know, a couple of episodes is impossible. Yeah. And they always forget the heart of the show was Barnabas and Julia, mm -hmm. and their teamwork as as friends and you know, yeah, exactly. And it, they seem to just gloss over that. It's like, you know, the the trilogy thing or the whatever they call it these days, the three people, Barnabas, Josette, and Auslick, that was fine. And it was important, but not like the core of the friends, the family, and, you know, yeah. that was the center of the show. Yeah, I so, agree. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we will see a return to something like that. Certainly nothing Depp did got any where near there although i must say i loved um what, what is her name ava green mm -hmm. i loved her performance i thought she was wonderful and i, f I really wish she had been freed from there early on. <laughs> i felt badly for her by the end of that film but um you know it had a it had a solid cast unfortunately it the main character was in a bad place by then. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where they were going with that makeup. <laughs> but uh, so do you have any um, perceptions about Dark Shadows as a as a, a theme or an Uber experience or the show itself since you've be become connected to the people? Um, it's, yeah, it's weird to now, now when I watch something, if I do watch something, it's very strange because I know them all. So I'm seeing all of their own like quirks and things and, and it feels more like I'm watching like a home movie, like a family <laughs> video. <laughs> so it's very weird, but, um. Yeah, no, I mean, I can just end it with, like, I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky that I got somehow into this and that they um, they said yes to me when I was very young and now I'm, like, part of this thing, um, which, when I was a kid, never would have expected. So, like, you guys are talking to me right now. I is like, I'm connected to that. To me, I'm just like, well, I just kind of fell into it. But, um didn't we I'm all lucky yeah <laughs> i'm very lucky and very grateful because i've learned a lot and they're all so generous and nice and um they care and they've all been through the mill yeah yeah they've and been unfortunately the we this that industry doesn't treat well uh older actors and actresses as you know yeah. and that just the fact that there's someone who's aware that they're they have something left to give 
I think is is wonderful. And I thank you for using them. Thank you. Thank you. Because they're still great actors. They are. They are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. David won Best Supporting Actor for Todd Tarantula. I think it's like his first acting award ever <laughs> for my yep. movie, which is weird. <laughs> yeah. well, what of, one of our past uh, <clears throat> guests on the show is currently making a horror film. Uh, Carl oh, e yeah. Car Carn Evil Freak Show is the name of it. And he just got nominated for a screenplay. So so we, we like having these filmmakers on there. <laughs> you guys are swell. Yeah. No, seriously, you guys are among the best guests because you know how what we're doing, you know that you're that we're conceptualizing and all of that and now i'm getting boring so i'll show that uh, we'll do it we'll do everything possible to promote you yes thank we you. will thank you thank you all right we got to wrap it up here okay well I'll let you take us out thank you very much for being with us ansel and thank you for having me. especially with the very late notice that That's we okay. gave you That's and okay. i hope I hope we can welcome you back. Yeah, yeah. Let me know. Let me okay, know. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you very much. You have a good one. You too. Thank you. Okay. All we right. Are... So that's it. So you guys have a great week. We'll be back here next week with a guest. And that's a promise. Surprise. Yep. <laughs> Take it easy. Bye-bye. <laughs>